I, I'm just going to talk very quickly about um, the types of content we collect and what's coming up. I didn't have to use a clicker yesterday, so. Oh. There we go. Um, so as you know, we have this uh, vision of uh, the research nexus where we collect, where we connect um, articles and other um, research outputs to uh, data, preprints, videos, protocols, that sort of thing. Um, all through the power of persistent identifiers. Um, this is, it's a vision and it's the reality for some things, but not for others. Um, and that is due partially to um, the way we handle content types. Um, as some of you may know, in our metadata schema, we define types of content very rigidly. We have a single metadata schema, and then within that we have uh, supported tags for journal articles, for books, for um, dissertations, reports. Um, so if you have a kind of content that falls outside of those supported content types, um, you kind of have to fudge things a little bit to get your DOIs registered. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But I thought it might be interesting to just go over the content types we do support in, a, in our uh, timeline, uh, just to get you uh, pumped about what's coming up next. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Crossref started in 2000 with journal articles, quickly added books and conference proceedings in 2002, components, um, dissertations, reports, standards, uh, and data sets in 2006. And those, I think, are, are considered more traditional forms of uh, publications. Um, and so we've, at that point, we really stopped adding new content types and we focused on collecting different types of metadata. So the licensed metadata, the funding metadata, all the stuff you put into Crossmark. But, you know, as the landscape expands, it's, it's really obvious that we need to be um, connecting everything through identifiers. So we've been gradually, starting in 2016, adding new types of content. Um, we added the preprints, or as, as we call them, posted content in 2016, peer review, um, then we added uh, the pending publication uh, this year, very recently. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> um, so Jennifer Lynn talked about publication, a uh, pending publication um, earlier, which is great because I, I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. But that is the newest uh, content type and we're currently doing a, a beta test of that. So if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, let one of us know. Um, just to give you an idea um, of what's going on with how many records are registered, obviously, you know, if, if we had um, a homecoming, the queen would be the journal article, um, maybe the king would be the book chapter, and then I, I won't bother to classify these other ones because you, you get down to the, the peer review and then you might get into some um, unkind uh, high school classifications. At, at this point, I, I think this is hilarious and, and you seem to enjoy me saying random things. So I'm going to tell you that I was voted most shy in my high school. <laughs> so that would be the, the, the peer review of this high school set here for those of you um, who are familiar with uh, U.S. high schools, I guess. But peer review is very new and it's picking up rad rapidly. So I think, I think at some point it will be voted most likely to su succeed and that'll be great. Um, so our plans for the future, um, we're working on a metadata schema for grant identifiers. This is actually pretty exciting for me personally because this is our first non-publication uh, content type and we've decided why are we trying to fit this into a metadata schema that Paul so beautifully pointed out has some issues? <laughs> why not start from scratch? You know, it's not a publication. Why are we putting it into a schema with publication dates? So we're starting from scratch with consistent naming, and um, I'll make sure I run it by you <laughs> before we publish that. Um, um, and we're also, you know, we're discussing conference IDs. Um, some other things that are fomenting are uh, DOIs for blogs, uh, for ge more general web resources, audio, video materials, and patents. Um, 
just a little bit more about um, grant IDs. Um, we don't. I, I haven't actually marked up the schema yet, but it, it's been it's been very exciting to to work with a, a working group that's giving us very active feedback while creating this uh, schema. Um, I, I thought I had it all figured out a couple weeks ago, and they they you know threw me a curveball, and now I have to start, uh, do you know kind of start from the drawing board. But it, it's it's exciting, and I'm, I'm confident we'll we'll come out with something really good in the end. Um, we're collecting metadata like investigator metadata. Um, we're coming up with a taxonomy of funding types. Um, so I, I think in the end, it'll really improve these connections between funding and research outputs. Um, so I just want to fi finish up by talking about um, the elephant in the room. I probably should have used some kind of elephant metaphor, but that that bird has flown, I guess. But um, so there, there, we have this thing that I think of as the data set dumping ground. We have these rigid content types, and then we have these wonderful, innovative publishers who want to assign DOIs to just a range of stuff that don't fit into our little silos. Um, and inevitably, they end up asking us for a guidance, and we often, you know, we cringe and bite our fingernails and stuff and tell them, well, maybe you might want to register it as a data set if it doesn't fit into anything else. Um, the reason we do that is because the data set metadata is very flexible. Um, but, you know, it's in a silo that says it's a data set. So we have a video that is not data um, in a data set. So if you're querying our API and getting data sets, you're going to end up with this poor video. Um, dressed up as a data set and you'll be confused and the video doesn't really get to express to the community what it really is, which is a sad thing. Um, so one of the things I think we'll be thinking about going for, forward is do we really need these silos? Uh, do we need to have more flexible content types? I, I don't think it's realistic to say, okay, you wanted to assign a DOI to a case study, let's create a case study content type. You know, that's like, that, that's not really sustainable. I think we can uh, build a better metadata schema that fully supports what we want to do. So that when we'll have this wonderful landscape full of metadata, zebra, unicorns, and a video can be a video. Um, uh, you know, case study can be a case study. Uh, PowerPoint presentation can be a PowerPoint presentation. And, and um, you'll be able to identify and use that, that data in the way that you want to. And that's all I have. Hi, um, I had a question about, so, you know, all of us, you know, when we, we, we don't have a dog house to put our, put our dog in, we, we put our dog somewhere else, right? So. I didn't know if you were concerned, you know, when people didn't have a home for their content types and shoved them into dog house, shoved cats into dog houses and things like that. Or would you then expect when you make your schema changes for the members themselves to redeposit based on the new interpretation of, of a new set? Or is that something Crossref will actually take on on behalf of members? based on the original deposit data it received? You know, how will it, how will it kind of manage what m is somewhat of a breaking kind of change like that? So that's a good question. I'd say we would want the members to redeposit the data just because if it is forced into a non-imperfect content type, there's going to be metadata missing. They're going to be fudging some stuff, so it's better if they give us all of the metadata that they need. I th I would say we would do a lot, give a lot of support for that, um, maybe even mapping data set fields to whatever they're doing. Um, but, um, and possibly we could transfer some of them, but uh, generally we ask people to redeposit. Thanks, Patricia. Can I ask a question about the funding data? Can you just clarify a couple of things? You talked about um, the funding IDs being a new content type, and obviously getting a grant is a scholarly output in itself. But 
are you going to presumably you're going to be linking those grant IDs to the rest of the stuff in Crossref because those are the things that actually funders are really keen to know about. So what publications came from this or pre, you know preprints, all these things. So are you going to cross linking the whole lot together? Yes, I mean, we we currently in our funding data we co we collect the funder supplied grant IDs. So I think we we definitely be adding our own identifier as an option. Um, whether or not, I, I mean, we haven't had a discussion about whether we do any of that in any automated way um, to populate a funder's grant IDs with matching DOIs, um, so that's, that's another conversation, but um, it, it, we're definitely going to do our best to make those connections. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Patricia.